Hello, and welcome to an introduction on getting started with the SharePoint Patterns and Practices JavaScript library, PNPJS. My name is Patrick Rogers, and I'll be showing you how to install, use, and test through a basic example within SharePoint Framework. Future videos will cover additional topics and expand on what we see here today, but getting started is always the first step. To that end, I've created an SPFX project using the Yeoman generator containing a single web part and no JavaScript framework to keep things simple. Our first step is to install the PNPJS libraries. We're going to use the npm install command and install the logging, common, odata, and sp libraries. Now that the libraries are installed, we need to import them into our project to use them. We're going to start in our web part by importing the sp constant out of the at pnp slash sp library. This sp constant is the beginning of all of our fluent API chains when using the library. The next step is the only real gotcha when using PNPJS. We need to provide the context of SharePoint Framework to the library so that we can understand where we are in relation to the websites and lists and things of that nature. This allows us to understand where this web part is running within the context of SharePoint Framework. This is the only way to really understand where you are, especially as SharePoint Framework assets can sometimes be used in places other than SharePoint, such as Teams. Finally, we're going to replace the code in the render method to something slightly different. We're going to change the inner HTML to show us a loading message, and then we're going to use set timeout to give us a little bit of a delay so we can see the loading message. And then we're going to call sp.web and select allows us to use the odata select operation, and we're going to get just the title and description fields from the current web. And finally, we'll call the get method, which, is, which executes the get request to the server. And finally, we'll set our results uh, in a very well formatted pre tag uh, with json.stringify, just as a way to show the data that's come back from the server. Now that we've completed that, let's run gulp serve within our project directory. Now that gulp serve is running successfully, we can come see our web part. And our web part, this is the online workbench, so we have access to the actual web data, is bringing back our title and description. This is a very simple example, and you could easily expand this to do other things with other types of SharePoint assets. For example, let's replace this line with a line to get some data from a list. Here we're saying sp.web.lists get by title. This is the title of my list is big library dot items. And we're again using an odata operation to get the top 30 items from the list. And then again, get will execute this get request. The rest of the code stays the same. We'll go back to our web page and refresh it. And we'll see our loading message followed by the 30 items. So thank you for watching our introduction to using PNPJS in SharePoint Framework. Please be sure to check out our future videos that will expand on this example, as well as do things like call graph resources, use the library from Node.js, and other topics. If you have topics you're particularly interested in seeing, please let us know. Mm -hmm.